think I'm going to call this video where the spiritual rubber meets the reality road or something clever like that. But I'm going to try and give you an explanation as to what happened over the last week that validates and confirms much of the content that I delivered in a video titled Breaking the Spell of Spiritual Parasites. And I had to go back and watch that video because the things I said in that a year and a half later bore fruit. And when I watched that video, I realized there's actually three videos right there I made all at the same time. And the one called, you'll have to excuse my dirty fingernails, the one called Breaking the Spell of Spiritual Parasites is the middle one. And it talks about my boss, Rex, who for, at the time I had only been working for for about five weeks I had been working at this job. And I described a behavior pattern that I saw him demonstrating. And I also showed you the same exact behavior pattern or explained the same exact behavior pattern that he was demonstrating. In a story I relate about my stepdad and his boss, Troy. And his boss, Troy, has the spiritual parasites on his back that need to feed on other people's negative emotions. And so did my new boss of five weeks. That makes three people at this company who tried to manage me and failed to do so because they couldn't manage themselves. And they demonstrated a lack of impulse control and self-control. And I'll just give you a quick synopsis of the first two and then Rex. So, first week I was there. I call Rex the wizard and his understudy or protege that wants to be just like him, Harry Potter, the wannabe wizard. First week I was there, he drove his truck at me. A forced evasion. If I wouldn't have turned the wheel or hit the brakes, we would have collided semi-trucks. Because they had... We were supposed to switch positions in line. And he came up beside me, went to go cut me off, and I had to hit the brakes to keep from us colliding. And then he stopped right there in moving traffic in a lane that wasn't coned off where he could have gotten rear-ended at 70 miles an hour and cost the person their life. And he rolls off next to me and rolls down his window and starts screaming, you, didn't you hear me on the radio? And I rolled down, I just, it's like a day or two later, he said, he tried to kind of like half-ass apologize and say, but you know, Rex was yelling at me and it cost X amount of dollars to close the freeway exit and time constraints and this, that, and the other implying that under the same circumstances I would do the same thing and he even said that I said dude you stopped your truck in moving traffic at 70 miles an hour someone could have hit you in the air he said yep that's right sure did as if he's trying to defend his actions and there is no logic or rationale that would justify what he did because he was acting erratically illogically and irrationally and I told him, you'll never drive another truck at me ever again under any circumstances. Are we clear on this? He, uh, oh, okay. And he walks back in the, the shop like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go tell Rex I'm, I'm ready to fire you already. And then he walked back out. We, we both had to go. I was sitting passenger. He was in the driver and he drove and I, he, he comes back out and says, you ready to go? I said, yep. And we got in the car and we haven't mentioned it since. And I never even mentioned it to the owner or to my manager above me that he did that. But I'm certain that he went and told, just like a kid who wants to be the first to tell on their sibling, oh, I gotta tell on you before you tell on me. I gotta set the narrative and tell my side of the story, but you know what I mean, how that goes. So I'm sure he went and told Rex what he did. And the fact that I never mentioned it speaks for itself. This truck that I'm now driving was owned by who is now the accountant at my company. He was a single owner operator, so he knows all the ins and outs of the accounting of a trucking business, how to cut the fat and everything else. 
and he was no longer driving it. It was just sitting in his yard. He sold it to my co the company I work for now, and now I'm driving it. He's the accountant. And one day, like I told you in the video links that I'll include in the description and that I'm about to upload, that's what this is, an explanatory video of what I'm about to upload that I've already recorded. That Rex runs around, and many of the words I'm about to tell you, I spoke to the owner of the company, and I am now directly uh, below the owner of the company. My manager is no longer my manager. The owner of the company is now my manager. Because I quit my job, and the owner talked me out of uh, leaving by promoting, or demoting, however you want to put it, my manager saying, oh, he's back out on the road now. He's mostly just driving, so you can just directly deal with me. I said, okay, I guess I'm not quitting after all. This was two or three days ago. So I've explained how this guy, Rex, injects his emotional poison into others around him tries to recreate the misery that's inside of him, inside of someone else, and that gives him a temporary feeling of satisfaction and relief from the spiritual parasite that's on his back gnawing at him, wanting to feed on his negative emotional energy, trying to get him to elicit a negative emotional reaction from somewhere else. And when he can do that and get someone else pissed off, the parasite on his back gets to feed for a minute, so it leaves him alone, and he gets a temporary reprieve from whatever's eating him up in here. And this is where the spiritual rubber meets the road because the reality, this is where philosophical, theoretical, cosmological, nuanced concepts actually make all the difference in the world. In the real world, not just in some theoretical afterlife or something. So the first week, Mike literally tried to run me off the road. So he was therefore no longer a viable candidate to be a manager and tell me what to do because you have no business telling other people what to do when you can't even conduct your own behavior and your decision making demonstrated that you have no business being in authority over someone else. And he said that night when he tried to draw him out, run me off the road with his truck, well Rex was yelling at me and I was, uh, and I, I explained this. And in, around the work I see people trying to go and inject that emotional poison into one another because someone did it to them and someone harassed them and someone gave them shit and so they harbor it. In psychological terms, they call it harboring and transference. One day, the accountant who used to own this truck, he said something to me. I don't even remember what it was about. I said, oh, I think uh, what you were trying to say got lost in the way that you said it. And he blows the fuck up. Whatever, I'm not playing this shit. And he goes in the office and he starts crying to Rex's wife who also works there as one of the office employees. And I walk in and he's, Jeff, what was that you said to me that, that, that what I said got lost in the way that I said it? I said, yep. What does that even mean? It means if you choose to speak to me with disrespect and contempt, that's your choice, but I think it might interfere with our ability to communicate. Something else was said in reference to tone of voice, and he, he was losing it. You could tell, it was like he was off his medication or something. The guy was emotionally unstable, and I might have even kind of taken advantage of that moment, but he said something to the effect of, oh, now we got Mr. Psychologist in the house here, huh? I said, no, you're just a real easy assessment. It doesn't take a genius to see that you're acting like a child right now. That's when Rex's wife said, okay, guys, and I turned around and walked out. Because she saw that, rhetorically, I just landed a couple really hard ones and there was no need for any further. The referee called the fight. And he lost because of emo emotional instability because he hasn't done the inner work. We were all told it matters to be a good person and do the right thing and all that, but then we went about our lives focused on the external world, making money, getting a job and a car and all this, that and the other. But because we didn't do the internal world work, it costs you everything you earned or acquired in that external world. Mike, and that number he pulled in the first week could have cost someone their life, could have cost him his driver's license. If the cops, if there was an accident and the cops rolled up, being first week on the job, I'd have told him exactly what happened and he would have gone to jail. 
That's called road rage if anyone else does it. But because you think you're my employer, you can do it. Anyway, so it's just another example of how it can cost you everything when you don't do the internal internal work. And we are coming to a point where our external world manifests around us and reflects our internal world. And we're coming to understand this. And that's the new currency. That might be the new social credit score. So, after this last week, when Rex opened his mouth to me, and I told him, okay, I'll remember that. I'll remember that. He knew I was speaking in double entendre. And then I didn't mean, okay, I'll remember all that shit that just rolled out of your mouth and never do it again, please forgive me, Rex. He knew I meant, okay, I'll remember that. I might have even pulled my own little sigh off because what he was bitching about was straps. <laughs> then I left the corner protectors off of that load because, well, he did what he always does. He screamed. Anyway, the next day I end up at my place without straps, called my dispatcher and said, this is my last load. Rex gets in my face and starts screaming about straps. This is what happens. He's good for a drill sergeant, an initiation phase. But it's going to cost the company... Once we've decided we want to keep a driver, we don't need a... It's counterproductive for the company to allow Rex to continue managing them. I said a few other things. He ran me out some straps. By the time I got back to the shop, the owner was there, asked me, you know, are you really quitting? I said, yeah, I think it'll probably be best. Rex doesn't work with me very well. And he said, oh, well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Ultimately, what he said is Rex is back out on the road driving, and I'm going to be managing the drivers directly now. Okay, I guess I don't quit. And I told him much of the stuff I'm telling you, that Rex has emotional turmoil. He has insecurity, feelings of inferiority complex, and a low self-esteem. And he runs around trying to inject that poison into everyone he can. W quote that I said to my boss, I said, I enjoy my peace of mind. And I don't want to give it away to someone who's trying to take a piece of it every time they get within proximity of me. I explained to him how you give someone authority directly proportionate to the task they've been assigned and only for the purpose of being able to carry out that task. But when you give someone with low self-esteem and an inferiority complex authority, they then wield it in whatever way they want in pursuit of their own agenda, which is to get that feeling of satisfaction... And that it's going to cost the company. So my point is, I had to go back and watch that video called Breaking the Spell of Spiritual Parasites. Because it was in that video that I described five weeks into this. I even told my owner, I keep a video diary. And I made a video of Rex's pathology. I use that word. Yeah, I'm a psychologist in the house here. I made a video about Rex's pathology when I had only worked here five weeks, I told him. Remind you now... Everyone at that company could be watching my YouTube videos because I gave my dispatcher two links to the Sun Tunnel video. So there's a good chance they watch what I do. Anyway, after this all came to a head, I had to go back and watch that video where I predicted this. And this event proves that there is truth within the content of of the concepts that I presented in that video regarding Rex, and I even related this same spiritual parasite behavioral pattern to my mom and Doug. She plays the damn it Doug game. I related it to Doug's boss at the time, Troy, and Doug. How Doug shares his spiritual soul tokens with Troy, and there's a vampiric parasite host relationship there. So instead of re-explaining it all again, three links are in the description, and the next videos I upload are going to be those very same videos, but it, uh, recorded phone to phone. But if you want to watch them in a little bit higher quality of video and audio, just click the original links in the description. One of them is titled something about the ETI community, human allies of the ETI community. 
breaking the spell of spiritual parasites, and I forget what the third one is called, but it is the most potent. You will hear understandings in those videos about the collective and the individual, and about how the collective, the group, can be convinced of any of the most ridiculous, absurd, off-the-wall thing, and the individual will go along with it to stay part of the group. And you can see that that is where we are now, is at that point where each individual is going to have to decide at what point they abandon the group. When the group goes this way and the truth keeps going that way, what are you going to do? Go with the group or go with the truth? So I just wanted to let you know, I watched those three videos, and not only is there truth that has aged very well and proven itself to be valid regarding the spiritual parasites and my concept of them, proven by the three people at my workplace who demonstrated they haven't done the internal work, they've got spiritual parasites, and it ultimately pushes them around and they lose their own self-control. You can either be empowered by your emotions or overpowered by your emotions. So, so the three links in the description... The middle three, the middle of the three is the one about spiritual parasites, where I talk about Rex, my new employer. But it's a set of three videos. Human allies of the ETI community is the first one. And I open it up saying that I'm going to wrap this back around where we started. And eventually I pretty well do that by the end of the third one. I don't even remember what the third one's titled. I should probably look it up. The third one is titled, The Truth Will Set You Free Individually While the Group Will Keep You Enslaved Collectively. The things that I say in there about the group and the individual and the choices we have to make are the things that everyone's saying now. The things that I said in that video pre-COVID, everyone knows that now. That's all anyone's talking about now. So, I'm going to leave those links in the description of this video. My next uploads are going to be those three videos recorded phone to phone. Let's see if it's got that blinking. It does. This is invisible to the naked eye. This blinking infrared. So also in the link in the description will be showing you a mouse with this blue light, blue Li-Fi connected to his dome. And you can see when the light turns on and it makes him attack. It turns him into a stone cold killer immediately on a cricket, on a fake bug that's just kind of wiggling around, and on an inanimate object that's just a, a piece of whatever it is. And they show you that the mouse kind of sniffs the cricket and walks away or whatever, but once that blue light turns on, you can see when it turns on and instantly the mouse bites. The cricket, the fake bug, the little in inanimate object, whatever it is, the mouse immediately bites that thing. What they didn't show you was two mice with these blue things in their head in a cage full of other mice. Because then you might go, wow, this is really effed up. Especially when you recognize those termites are sentient beings. That's why we have such trouble looking at those self-portraits that they drew in the wood of themselves like a family photo album. Because that means they're intelligent. That means they are sentient, conscious beings, not just bugs. Superimpose that understanding onto these mice. It's a pretty messed up thing to do. There's also another understanding that can be gleaned out of this, and that is that these things that they talk about when they say that there's like healing centers where they use light and sound frequencies, color, light, sound, that's also what's incorporated into every spiritual ritual where they summon, evoke the spirits. There's a shape, a color, a sound. Those are all vibratory frequency patterns. And if that vibratory frequency pattern of this blue light can turn a mouse into a stone cold killer instantly at the push of a button, there's probably other things that can be done like healing through frequencies. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. <laughs> it 
This cannot be seen with the naked eye. It is probably ultraviolet because it looks kind of purple. If it looked kind of red, I would say it's infrared at the edge at the edge of the visible light spectrum range. So I think at this point, I'll probably start speaking more about the esoteric, ethereal nature of our experience that we're having here and of my own personal life experience, which, as I said, while it was happening, you're all going to have to go through this also. That also is bearing fruit and aging well, because it appears that that is the case. This is more of the physical nature of our reality rather than the esoteric, etheric, spiritual nature. But it just occurred to me that there's a war on conspiracy theorists. And the first volley in that war was Nashville. I just found Mental Boost's new channel. I'll include a link in the description. Apparently, they dumped his old channel. And it took me a while to realize it. And he's got three or four videos on the Nashville explosion. You know, Christmas... So long ago, we've already forgot about it because things are piling up so quick. My point was, if I can remember, oh yeah, to discredit the truth with a faux movement, F-A-U-X. I've talked about this many a times, including the feminist movement. Any movement you see that's building and about to emerge, you create a fake version of the same movement, whether it's liberate the blacks, the women, the this, whatever movement, controlled opposition, is developed by creating, by getting your people in the leadership position of that movement, you create a fake movement. Like, I'll try not to bounce around too much and I'm not even sure I've fully fleshed out this concept, but when I realize watching Mental Boost's first video that I've only watched a little tiny bit of, that guy in Nashville was a 5G conspiracy theorist, and he believed in shape-shifting lizards that live among us. And he blew up that building, which makes you dangerous for even thinking or believing or talking about anything similar. So, the way that you discredit something is to put that truth in the mouth of someone, like... The new congresswoman, what's her name, Green, who says, you know, there's little, little green space lasers from uh, outer space with yarmulkes, Jewish space lasers. You discredit the truth by putting the truth in the mouth of this person that is the fall guy who's going to speak that truth and add something to it or take away from it. Anyway, they discredit the fall guy and the truth along with it and anyone else who speaks of that truth. So I'm going to Watch a little more of those mental boost videos and see what kind of analysis he has in there. But it occurred to me that that is part of the war on conspiracy theorists or free thinking people. And they have just yet to revisit that topic. But very well may be that they revisit that topic at a time where just like they tried to charge Trump for inciting insurrection. They will charge conspiracy theorists for inciting fill in the blank and use that as an example of how dangerous these people are. Marjorie Taylor Greene, she said, I was allowed to believe things that weren't true. Well, we'll have to put a stop to that. And just to wrap this up, because my memory's running short, I schooled the missionaries. I was out in my driveway a couple days ago, and the missionaries walk up, and you know how they do, trying to, hey, how you doing? What's going on? I said, oh, I just got a little hobby thing I do here, making artwork out of these trees. I wasn't even going to say nothing until he said, yeah, that's, that's cool how it's like, you know, burned on the inside. So I went and grabbed a couple pieces, showed him what happens, told him you walk down this street and take a right, and you'll notice all those telephone poles are burned on one side that you can go up here into Spanish Fork and see this kind of stuff all over, and this is one of the signs of the times, boys. I'm sure I'll talk with them again real soon, and I'll let you know how that conversation goes. But as for the whole reason for this video, is to tell you that I'm 
re-uploading videos that I've previously produced. The links will be in the description, but I think the content of those videos is important enough that I'm actually going to reproduce it. So all a person has to do is click play because I know that people don't like to click links in the description. And I think the content in those videos is important enough and valid that I'm just going to throw them back up again. Because I talk about how with each one of these events, there's a separation, like a 9-11 style event where either you hold on to the truth or you go with the group. And this separation is happening now and has been for a while. But when that video was made, it was still all conceptual and theoretical. Now you can see it happening in the world around you. And that's why from now on, the discussion is going to be about how the spiritual rubber meets